Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start right now just because we've got so much to cover and we have a guest speaker just to talk to you a little bit about some vaccinations and immunizations that are very pertinent and it's covered and it's preventative health and so we're going to launch a, a huge campaign probably July through September to kind of get people motivated and this is something that we will be able to start offering to all employees July 1 and so Shay Ingram from Merck is going to hear and she's going to talk to you a little bit about it so that y'all are in the next Know about what's to come. Who wants to go outside and do this? <laughs> Anybody? I love the meetings that start on. I don't even know if I need a mic. Do I need a mic? Well, we have callers on. Oh God! Oh, hey, hey, callers. <laughs> Hey, callers. Um, I am Shay Ingram, though. I've been with Merck for probably 21, going on 22 years. How are you? I see all these faces I know now. Um, I do the vaccines for Merck, and we make everything from birth to death, literally. Your chicken pox, your measles, mumps, rubella. Um, really what we're going to focus on today are more of the adult vaccines, so the pneumonia shots, the shingles vaccine, and uh, Gardasil. I'm going to hit a couple points on that at the end. And I'm thrilled to work with West Tennessee Healthcare. I don't think I have to say that you guys are a major influence in our market. I don't have to say that. You guys cover about 8,000 employees, maybe 9,000 that are actually insured. 8,000 members insured. So some of you carry that insurance for the family. So I'm thrilled that West Tennessee Healthcare is in the community and has the focus that it does. And I have to tell you, I'm an aerobics teacher at Gold's Gym. So I require them to interact with me. I'm going to require you to do the same thing. I'm going to ask some questions. You guys, it's a small group, so just talk to me. Um, I want to make sure this stuff is relevant to you. But the big thing I want to start off with is just how many people have gone to the doctor recently or, or even in the last year and they look at you and tell you to do something? Raise your hand. I mean, like, have they told you to take a medicine differently or to diet or to exercise or to do something, right? I mean, we almost always get something from them whenever we go, and that's a good thing. That's part of their role. But what I want to encourage you guys today, vaccines really are different because it does the job for you, right? Once you accept it and, and you take that vaccine on, vaccines have literally changed diseases. Um, the number one reason people die in your hospital, somebody shout out, what is still the number one reason people are dying in this hospital? Complications from what? You get a cookie. If I had any, I'd bring you a cookie. <laughs> but yes, pneumonia, y'all. I mean, and it's been, um, I, I have Pneumovax 23, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There are two vaccines recommended for your adults now, Prevnar and pneumonia uh, 23. The challenge is that it's not a failure of the vaccine. It is a failure to vaccinate. We have struggled with actually getting it. Now, the other thing I know, because I've done this for 21 years, is there's never a boring day with vaccines. Everybody's got an opinion about a vaccine, right? Everybody does. So I understand the challenge. Just for my perspective, raise your hand if you are clinical in the room. Because I know, okay. And if you're business and don't know clinical, there we are. <laughs> okay. So I want to make sure that this makes sense to everybody. Um, we're going to go through just a couple of things with the diseases, just as an awareness. And then we'll talk through what the plan looks like that we're going to try to implement in July. And heads up, this is just an intro. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes with you and answer some questions if you have any. Our goal is that when you leave today, you go back to your little department group that you're over and you relate to them the good news that West Tennessee Healthcare, at no cost to you, 100% covered, no copay, no deductible, is going to cover these vaccines for you. Okay? Anybody go for a wellness exam over at the health center each year? Everybody does, right? So that is where they're going to be offered, just kind of as a heads up. So preventing diseases. The first one I do want to talk to you about is herpes zoster. Um, anybody had chicken pox? Raise your hand if you've had chicken pox. Yeah, we're of that generation where we would go to parties at times, right? If we didn't go to a party, we'd have really nasty scars as a leftover. But zoster is basically the reactivation of that. So what happens, that's a complicated slide, but basically what happens is that chicken pox happens, and then it goes dormant and lays in this dorsal root area, and it waits for you to get old and stressed. Anybody got that in their life? I haven't figured out how to stop either of those. If I could, we would have a different, uh, we'd be in Bermuda talking about them, right? But it gets old and stressed, and then it reactivates as herpes zoster, also known as shingles. Um, usually, lifetime expectancy of shingles, it's one in three, will end up with shingles in their lifetime. So just because I'm curious, raise your hand if you've actually had shingles. 
I'm part of that. So we've got about five in here that, that have. And the average age, what happens as we get older, this is completely... Um, just a picture of some of what areas it follows a dermatone. It usually, if you hear people, and I know I could probably pull the audience that has had it, it is an inside out pain. So it starts with the nerve on the inside and it literally is like a stabbing pain. Um, some people have described it as a fire ants kind of running on the inside of your body. And it obviously can hit any place on your body that has a dermatone. So I haven't picked a place that's a good idea. The top right picture there where you see shingles ophthalmicus, where it affects that eye, my grandmother unfortunately had that. Again, we don't get to pick when it comes, we don't get to pick how long it lasts, and we don't get to pick where it, where it, where it lands. Hers landed in her eye, and as a result, she's lost her vision. I'm not trying to be dramatic to sell a vaccine. I'm telling you, my very own grandmother had complications from it that resulted in vision loss. As a result of her vision loss, we, um, she was getting dizzy on the Neurontin, which is what normally is prescribed for the uh, nerve damage. As a result of the nerve damage, she took medication. Medication made her dizzy. We ended up buying a $1,000 lift chair because she was falling. And guys, the story just kind of continues from there, okay? So if you were to ask her at 91, just got to celebrate Mother's Day with her, which was awesome. But if you were to ask her, what's probably the hardest thing you've gone through? And y'all, they were of the day where they delivered babies without any medication. She would tell you this. And unfortunately, we don't get to pick whether or not it comes back. About 30% of your shingles cases actually are recurring. So not to be the bearer of bad news, the good news is that we actually make a vaccine. The earlier any vaccine is given, the better it works. So if you are 50, well, 60 for your organization, if you're 60 and older, um, you would take the vaccine, and it reduces your risk of having an outbreak by over 70%. Okay? So that's good news, right? Good news on that. Just a couple points. I mentioned this already. After the age of 50 is when we really see an incremental increase in the risk of shingles. Um, the vaccine is about 70% of all shingles cases do occur after the age of 50. I can tell you mine occurred before that. It can reactivate at any point. That's based on your immune system as well as the stress kind of going on in your life. So... Anybody that had the shingles that raised their hand, did you have a recurrence? Have you had any additional problems? Good, you healthy people. That's good. That's good news. Um, and then this just kind of gives you an idea. They have ranked, I think, the, the most interesting piece down here at the bottom. There are a lot of ladies in the room. But acute pain, labor pain, and then over here, prodromal pain, kidney stones. They have ranked it above those things and comparable in some people to some pretty dramatic, um, dramatic problems. So it's not a quick phase. You can see the timeline at the bottom. Generally, it's three months, about 12 weeks for the vesicles to come out. And usually about three months, the pain starts to resolve. And then from there, usually you might have nerve damage and that can last on, you know, forever. There's not necessarily a guarantee that that goes away. That is the reason the vaccine makes sense. So this is the problem is that we've got a vaccine that actually will reduce your risk, but only about 30% of the eligible population has gotten the vaccine. So again, I'm thrilled that West Tennessee Healthcare is highlighting that for you guys so that you can maybe be part of the statistic that is in the blue and we can start changing that. Um, it is important. Same thing if you have people that are insured under your plan to bring them in and also, also get that through your insurance. So let me pause here. Any questions from you guys on Zostavax? Everybody okay? All right. Pneumococcal disease, pneumonia, I did mention that in the beginning because it is the number one reason people die in your system. Um, pneumococcal disease, we launched Pneumovax 23, which is the adult vaccine, back in 1996. I mean, it's been out for decades. The problem that we, ch that we have, this is just a, a graph that I'll build. Bottom line, what we're trying to prevent with the adult pneumonia is pneumococcal pneumonia, which is the main reason they come in here. We also have bacteremia as well as meningitis. So the lungs, the blood, and the brain, those are your three targets that we're trying to get. Now, raise your hand if you've ever had pneumonia, walking pneumonia. 
Yeah, so so a lot of people will say, well, I've had the vaccine and then I still got pneumonia. You guys need to be real clear. There's a bunch of things that can cause pneumonia. But what we've included in our adult vaccine is 23 of the serotypes that cause the big, nasty, life-taking disease. I mean, the big stuff, right? So it's not necessarily just the pneumonia, uh, walking pneumonia, but it is the chronic stuff that actually could take you take you down in the, in the hospital. Um, and then on the side, just risk factors. Your chronic heart, lung, um, diabetics, your smokers, just plain old asthma at this point. According to the CDC, CDC says all of these people are high risk and that those patients also need at any age to get a vaccine on board. So just as an example, if I'm 40 years old and I have diabetes or if I'm just a smoker, I may be pretty healthy, right? I'm not dragging oxygen yet, but that's the whole point is the earlier you get a vaccine on board, the better it's going to work. So that's one of the goals with West Tennessee Healthcare is identifying who has these chronic conditions and getting you guys in so that we can be sure that we get you, get you vaccinated. Cool. Medicare has different regulations. Um, you guys aren't there yet, but uh, let me show you one more thing. This right here just shows you how low the vaccination rates are among those chronic conditions. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. These have gone up just a little bit, but we're still in the 20% rate. So since 1986, how many decades is that? That's a bunch. Not good at math, better at science. But that, that is a whole lot of time to say that we need to get vaccinated and haven't done anything about it, right? It's not going to work unless it goes in the arm. That kind of, that sounds pretty obvious, but it is true. So before I transition, yeah, basically I can transition out of that and we can do the commercial in just a second. Um, but from the adult perspective, there is an additional vaccine once you get to Medicare age that they're now recommending, which is also a Prevnar 13. And again, they'll assess at the health clinic whether or not you're eligible for that. Generally, that doesn't come on board until your Medicare age. And then you'll get one of the 23, which we've just discussed, and then one of the 13s. Prevnar 13. For the people that are not clinical, let me keep it simple. 13 has always been made for the baby vaccine for pneumonia. The 23, little number, little kids, 23, big number, big kids, has been for the adult vaccines. Make sense? Medicare, they kind of want everybody to get everything, so you're going to get one of each of those. But uh, as long as you're still working and you fall into this category, if there's a chronic condition on board, we want to be sure that pneumonia is given. Any questions on that? Good question. So the dosing on that vaccine, Pneumovax 23, let's just assume that, I'm just going to assume you have asthma, okay? <laughs> You've been volunteered. So she has asthma. She's young. Uh, how old are you? 34. She's really young. I was 34 once. So at 34, she will get the vaccine today. And then according to the CDC guidelines, we don't get it again until 65. At 65, that's when you might get a 13 and a 23 because your Medicare population. Make sense? But really, it's one and done prior to 65. Now, AIDS, cancer, severely immunosuppressed patients are going to follow a little bit different regimen with a booster in between. But 99% of the people that you guys are going to employ and work with are going to be fairly healthy, maybe with a chronic condition, and fall into the category where it's one prior to 65. Cool? Y'all are just like, Blowing it up with questions. What else you got? See, now in my fitness class, I would make y'all talk to me because I know your name's in my fitness class. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. And, and I want to make sure that I preface my responses by you guys, everything that I'm mentioning is a CDC recommendation. Okay, Merck is the manufacturer. We make them, we sell them, we talk it. But the CDC is who determines the regimens we follow. We don't just make this up to make more money. <laughs> there actually is good clinical science to show that we need to get it on board then. But the, the one thing I will urge, though, is if I have said since 1986 to these physicians, vaccinate your diabetics, just for example. If the vaccination rate is still sitting at 30%, some of that, I think, has got to be we need to provide education, right? I mean, we've got to be educated to know even what we need If the because the physician sometimes misses that. If it's a well visit that we go for, pretty good. But if it's a chronic or disease management, sometimes we miss it because that's not what you are here for that day. 
Any other questions, y'all, on these couple of that? Any, any adult vaccine? I know I've only mentioned a couple here. Sure. You know, the problem is that there is no predictor of what it's going to look like. And, and I mean that sincerely. There, There's really no way to know. Like, you would kind of think the opposite. If I had a really bad case of chickenpox, I might mount the immunity, right, so that my outbreak, secondary outbreak of shingles may not be quite as bad. But the truth is we don't have the data to tell you. It really is a guess, y'all. And if we count it off and one in three ended up with it, we really don't know Number one, like I said, where it's going to land, how long it'll last, and exactly how many times it may come back. Once a dermatone is damaged, so I don't know where you guys had your challenge. My grandmother, for instance, though, once that dermatone was damaged and those nerves were impacted, she's had about two recurrences. And it's just because it's weakened, right? I mean, that's susceptible to me when I don't feel good. That's going to be where it attacks. Anybody had a mouth sore, cold sore on the inside of their mouth? Anybody? Seriously, like 90% of the world has it, so I know y'all have these. So sometimes, like you may be feeling okay, but like you may get this cold sore, and it could be that you're stressed out, it could be that you didn't sleep well, it could be that your body's trying to fight something that you're, you know, not big enough to take you down, but big enough to cause a problem. That's kind of what happens with shingles. It's that same concept of a, of a herpes that just sits back and waits for us to get old and stressed. So anything else? Yes, ma'am. Great question. Um, according to our studies, we included people that had chicken pox, remembered having chicken pox, or lived in the United States for more than 10 years. Chicken pox is so virulent, guys. I mean, that's why we had the chicken pox parties. 99.7% of everybody that lived went before the vaccine was exposed. Now, whether you actually created a rash and had the full-blown chicken pox or remembered having that, even if you did not, you would still get the Zostavax just by age alone. Zostavax is 17 times more potent than what we give our babies to prevent chicken pox. And as we age, we've got to have actually more to make a result. Make sense? Yes. I'm saying we should talk to your doctor. <laughs> I'm going to have a disclaimer because allergies, allergies do, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you actually mentioned that because y'all there, anytime you take a drug, raise your hand if you've ever taken a drug that doesn't have a side effect. I mean, there's not a vaccine in the world that you could put in your body that doesn't run a challenge, right? The benefits far outweigh the risk or we wouldn't ask for universal vaccination. We know we can prevent diseases. We've proven that with measles, mumps, and rubella, right? So we know that it works. It's just there are going to be populations of people that may have allergies or that are too sick to be vaccinated. The shingles vaccine is a live vaccine. It is a live vaccine. So we would not want AIDS patients or cancer patients. Um, but overwhelmingly, even if you have chronic conditions, as we mentioned, those are still good candidates to get the vaccine. In your instance, I would definitely, you know, find out what the doctor thinks about that. In general, from our label, from our studies, we took people just by age alone and vaccinated them. Uh, and, and they have been good. I mean, they were part of the study. So... Sure. So I want to transition real quick, just for sake of time, to a commercial, if I can, guys. Um, raise your hand if you're a mom or a dad. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about, just briefly, and the reason we're going to put this at the end, I want to just address the opportunity. Many of you, yeah, I don't have to just go to Google. Thank you. Hold on, hold one second. I need music in between, don't I? This commercial. So I want to I want to play it real quick, and then I actually will. I have cervical cancer from an infection, human papillomavirus. 
Who knew HPV could lead to certain cancers? Who knew my risk for HPV would increase as I got older? Who knew that there was something that could have helped protect me from HPV when I was 11 or 12, way before I would even be exposed to it? Did you know, Mom? Dad? I was infected with HPV. Maybe my parents didn't know how widespread HPV is. While HPV clears up for most, that wasn't the case for me. Maybe they didn't know I would end up with cancer because of HPV. Maybe if they had known there was a vaccine to help protect me when I was 11 or 12, maybe my parents just didn't know. Right, Mom? Dad? So, raise your hand if you've seen that commercial. Okay, everybody has. Um, we've started running these again. I, I want to just talk briefly about it, and I'm welcome questions. If there's ever a vaccine that usually has opinions and questions, it's this one. It is the newest vaccine recommended really for the adolescents. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background. We're on 11 years into the market with Gardasil. It has changed. We launched it as a quadrivalent. There are many, many virus strains that cause problems for HPV. And what we've added is five additional cancer strains to the vaccine. It's currently a nine valent, covers 90% of the cancers. The reason we're addressing it, the eligible population is nine to 26 year old males and females. If you're in that population, clearly it's a covered benefit. If you're not in that population, you may have children who are and may be insured with your group. And I want you to have the answers that you need to get potentially vaccinated um, this summer when you go in for back to school season. So the HPV, um, how many cancers, just, just for sake of conversation, how many cancers do you think HPV is related to right now? My clinical people, what's y'all's opinion? What, what have you heard? No guess? About seven. So currently there are about seven cancers that are listed behind this vaccine. Um, some of them Merck has done the studies, some of them the CDC has done the studies. So cervical, vulvar, vaginal cancers, anal cancel, cancers, excuse me, penile cancers, um, head, neck, and throat cancers, uh, genital warts. So just like the shingles vaccine, we don't get to pick the virus and we don't get to decide whether it sticks and stays. This is an important thing. If you leave with anything today, this is the statistic I want you to know. The percentage of people in a lifetime that have HPV. What is the percentage of males and females, it's the same percentage, that have HPV in a lifetime? Anybody want to throw it out? What, 80? Any other guesses? She said 80. I see my business people going, hey, I ain't got that, I ain't got that. I know I don't have that. It's nearly 100%. If you'll go to the CDC's website, it literally says virtually all will be infected with HPV in a lifetime. Now, let me tell you what the difference is. Not all HPV sticks and stays and causes cancer, does it? Raise your hand if you've had a runny nose. Okay, keep your hand up if the runny nose turned to pneumonia. Keep it up. If the runny nose turned to pneumonia and then killed you with pneumonia. <laughs> okay, no hands up. Good. <laughs> I was about to get nervous. So my point is that's, that is the description by our medical and thought leaders that has been given to HPV. That is how common and how prevalent it is. Now, I'm going to take 100% ownership as the Merck representative that launched this vaccine in this market. We spent a lot of energy talking about behavior associated to acquiring HPV in the beginning. And as a result of that, people have looked at this as though this is a sexually driven vaccine. Guys, if it prevents six to seven cancers, and nearly 100% of us have it, that's not a behavior, right? That's a public health matter. And we've got a vaccine that literally can, can take, for the ladies in the room, if we were to vaccinate your daughters, it will take 93% of every abnormal pap smear off the table. The biopsies and the procedures that we do as a result of precancerous lesions, 97% of them are going to be removed. It's not maybe it will work. It's got an amazing impact. My kids have been vaccinated. I've paid cash and been vaccinated, so I'm not just preaching it. I mean, I've actually done it with my own children. So I, I would love to um, 
answer questions if you have any. I do want you to know one change is that they have updated the dosing. If you have children that are 9 to 14 years of age now, it's only a two-dose regimen separated by six months versus the original three-dose regimen that we launched with. Okay? The older the kid, the more vaccine they got to have. And that's just true because our immune system's not quite as good. I'd hate to think that at 15 our immune system's going downhill, but <laughs> I guess we have to draw the line somewhere. So, the, uh, any questions on this particular vaccine? Right. So I'll give you my daughter as an example. Carly was vaccinated at 10 years of age with the old Gardasil, which covered four serotypes, 70% of the cancer, okay? When we added the new five serotypes in, it raised the cancer coverage by 20%. That was a big deal for me and my daughter. I want to know that she's got 20% more cancer coverage. It is paid for because it's a different product, a new CPT. So insurance pays for it. And it needs to be a personal decision for you. The benefit has come, personally, we decided that she would get it. The benefit comes primarily with the females. So if you guys have males, and I know you're, you're the sole male in here, man. We need more testosterone in the room, don't we? But, but the benefit we saw was primarily cancers driven in females. So, you know, it, I hope that answers your question. Is it covered by insurance? Yes. It's 20% more cancer coverage. And if you have other questions, certainly I can, I can help with that. Anything else, y'all? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Go back this summer. <laughs> no, we don't ever start over. So I don't know where you, where you go, but you will go back this summer. Tell me you'll go back. Say, yes, Shay, I'll go back. Thank you. I need to hear that. Um, but you will just go back and you will finish where you picked up. If they're under 14 still, they're not. Okay, then you'll probably have to finish with the two doses. So ask your physician. Again, I want you to make sure you go with them. Any dose given before 9 to 14, right, that's a two-dose regimen. 15 and older to 26 is a three-dose regimen, just as a heads up. So just so you guys know, I know safety is a concern. It's a concern for me as a mother, not just because I drink the Kool-Aid and sell these things. It's very important that this kid right here is taken care of. Y'all, we have vaccinated continents. And when I tell you the video that I watched from Haiti where it's the number one cancer killer over there, Merck donated it. So if it's a third world country, we've donated stuff. So these kids were lined up and they were all in the same t-shirts. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you these kids, some of them were not waist high. And they were holding little ones that were smaller than that, right? Holding that hand. And y'all, they were in line waiting for the vaccine that had disease had killed their mom. You were looking at the oldest of the family. So I don't say that to create emotion. I'm telling you, it's a real disease we can do something about. And because we don't see cancer as often here, thank you, Jesus, because of our healthcare systems and because of our pap smears and our preventative care, over there, y'all, in these third world countries, it's killing them. It's the number one reason they're dying. So universally, worldwide, public health-wide, it's a huge thing. And there's not an insurance that doesn't pay 100% of it. No out-of-pocket cost to anybody, ever. No copay, no deductible. So I know I'm right at my money. I'm right at that, that mark. So anything else that you guys need? Let me make a statement. I know we're planning, hopefully we're coming back in in July to give you a little bit more specifics. What we wanted you to do today is take away the good news that the company is going to pay 100% of this and we'll be able to offer it the same day as your wellness visit. Um, we will come back and hopefully have much smarter people than me on stage that can give you details about what that looks like starting in July. Cool? Thank you guys for your opportunity. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you, Twenty. I appreciate, I appreciate you letting me. I don't know how to get that off. That's okay. You got that. Yeah. Okay, okay are y'all informed? Are we all going to go get shots after this? Yes. If anybody needs my contact info, Shauna has it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not standing up here because I don't want to.
Okay. So, we got a lot to cover, and I want to get y'all out here in time. So, we're going to go through this super quick on what we got. And the first thing that we're going to go over, where's my notes? Is. Okay, we all know what our roles are. I just keep this in here as to as just a reminder of that you guys, you know, are leading the way. You, outside of me, the only time departments hear anything is from you guys. And still, like I said, this, this program's been made for four years. We still have people asking the most obscene questions on what to do, how do I do it, I have no clue, what is Healthy Heights. So... We're still struggling. We still have to give education. And we're going to quiz. Do I click? Maybe. Come on. There it goes. Okay. What do we have to do to join? How do we sign up? Where do we go? Employee help. And what do we do at Employee Health? Blood work. Come on. Why is this not working? What do you have to do to receive $150? Get the blood work done and then what? Meet one goal. Do I have to go to, oh, when do I get my money for logging minutes? Second paycheck, and I get paid quarterly. I don't know. Do I have to choose a fitness incentive? Do I have to go to Lyft? But I still get money? Yes. Do I have to call somebody? Do I have to go to classes? This question came up last week. We haven't called anybody in three years. Just point that out. So just remember when you're there. I mean, I know you guys know it, and that was silly for me to do it with you, but people in your department do not know it. They are clueless. They still are thinking. I had somebody ask me for the financial wellness class that went on yesterday for 403B. Do I need to be there? Where do I sign so I can get my incentive? I don't care if you show up or not. This is just for your benefit. You're not penalized or rewarded for it. So just remember that when you're talking about healthy heights and just break it back down to more simpler terms. Blood work, meet a goal. That's all we got. Okay, so quickly, what the second quarter events were, um, we just wrapped up the 403B um, education class for those that are able to receive the retirement plan and we're not taking advantage of it. And y'all, we have 1,700 invitations that were sent out. We had 70 show up, which is good. I mean, yay, but that's 1,700 people, 1,600 people that did not take advantage of just free money. More than likely, they are probably having some type of retirement plan somewhere, but this is something that we actually pay you to do. So please also remember to do that um, when things like this come out, breaking it down into that type of manner and reminding them they can still sign up. They did not have to come to this class. They can sign up by July 1 so that they can be eligible for this year. If they don't sign up by July 1, they will have to wait till January, and that's a, a VOIA thing that they can call. Oops. And then we've got right now on the, um, on the information vault for divorce adjustment and recovery, and that will be sent out. That was recorded. And then, obviously, we had tobacco, tobacco cessation. If you have anybody in your department that is a smoker or a tobacco user or they have a spouse, they get it. They can go to kick the habit, and they don't pay that $25 surcharge, which is $650 a year, just to, to say that I'm a tobacco user. And like I told you all in the email, we went in November. My husband 
dips and it has cut down tremendously. I can't tell you how, how much when we were going every day to now maybe once, twice every two weeks. So that's good. So remember to promote that. Um, that's on a quarterly basis as well. And then in June coming up, we are doing, we're doing more focus on long-term care and aging parents. So I've got some handouts, what you're going to see on the screen savers. And if you do not, I'll send these out electronically too. But um, if you want to take one, there's like six of them that we've got promoted for the the month of June and stick it up in your break room. You can take them down as, as we go through. But we're focusing a lot on um, the emotional toll aging parents because we have a lot of people that have either their parents have moved back in with them or they're having to rearrange their schedule to take care of aging parents or grandparents at this matter. So it's something that's going to be hit on with our emotional well-being. And we're also talking about it in the financial piece for how to plan for yourself. So I'm planning for me so that when my children get of age, they won't have to out-of-pocket expenses for, on my behalf. And then we will also be having... Um, Crystal, who's our uh, clinical dietitian manager, she's going to do a 10 tips on um, from a dietitian in June, and we will be focusing on build a bell or salad down in the the cafeteria. And then here's our focus for um, June for emotional well-being, grief, and that. When I was reading about this, this is not just death in the family. I mean, you could you could tie this into a divorce, a spouse, losing a spouse, losing a job, or, you know, a, a deep breakup. I don't know. Families, friends. So just don't tie grief into just actual loss, physical loss. Okay, so I wanted to cover this because I go over numbers with y'all every month or every time. And I was able to take our January through March babies and break them down by our biometric data. So I wanted you to see where we are for first quarter for our employees. And blood pressure, here we go. This is number one. This is also our number one claim for um, on our medical side. So keep this in mind too, hypertension. Green, we're, we're good. Here's our yellow, we're pre-hypertensive. So that is 120 to 139 over, what, 80 to 89. And then you've got, we got 20% in stage one. 140 to 159, over 90 to 99. And then you've got 2%, which I think is 13 people. Yeah, 13 people that are walked into employee health with 160 over 100 or higher. You know, we, we know if you're clinical, that you're stroked out. You need to go. You will be surprised of the, this is 639 people that came in from January to March. There was at least in the state prehypertension in stage one, I believe there was one person in stage two, there was probably 27, 36. There was 52 people that were not on medication, never been on medication, and this is, this is what they're running. So it's a lot of education about hypertension. Just keep that in mind. Here's cholesterol. Cholesterol is not too bad. Cholesterol, this is hyperlipidemia. This is number two on our medical claims. Um, we have normal, 71%, and then borderline. Here we are, 200 to 239, and then high, over 240. So that high is 45 people, and of that 45 people, 17 of them are not on medication. No. Yes, ma'am. What does that mean? What do you mean? I'm not okay. So that is you're looking at your triglycerides, your LDL, your HDL. We're looking at, is that visceral fat as well around your organs? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but so that is the fat in your blood. Yes, fat in your blood. So is that like leading to stroke, leading to heart disease? Heart disease, yes. And then here's our glucose, which is sugar, diabetics right here. And this is actually very well controlled, I will tell you. Um, 
we have that Living Well Diabetes Program. I don't know if y'all y'all are familiar with it, but that I feel like that has controlled us tremendously because our diabetes claims are at like 6.4%. And our numbers for controlling glucose is down. So you have to remember with these numbers, think about it. Half of these people told me they were on medication and they're still not controlling it with cholesterol and blood pressure. But at least with glucose, it looks like if you were in a condition, because I do not ask if you currently have diabetes, but I am asking, are you currently taking medication to control it? So there you go. And then here's our BMI. 25% of us are in a healthy BMI. I, I don't like BMI. I don't focus a lot on BMI because... Your body composition says a lot. But for the most part, obese and morbidly obese is a big deal. We need to make some big changes here in this area because this leads to hypertension. This leads to hyperlipidemia. This leads to diabetes. This is a big deal. And this can be, tro can be completely controlled. So that's my soapbox about that. Red number? Hmm. So that is 34%, which is out of the 639, 219. 11%, so 75 people. So you're looking at 280. You're half. There's half of your people already. So this is why, you know, I, I focused a lot on the food nutrition that we have down at the, in the cafeteria. And I don't know if y'all have noticed, they've made some big, they made some small changes with labeling and giving more um, descriptions of what is healthy. And I think they put out the calories and the content in them. So we're, we're still moving in that direction. It's, it's small baby steps. We live in the South. I can't take away everything. Um, but they did move from... Like I told you, the thinner Tuesday is every Tuesday. So also, I wanted to share with you what I just learned this week, because we had our Aetna year review for 2016. And if y'all aren't on the plan, I understand that this probably doesn't mean a lot to you, but you can just take this, and, and we all fit into this category. I mean, us as a population as a whole for West Tennessee Healthcare, we can roundabout say that we all fit here. So here's our number one cost for medical claims is musculoskeletal. We spent $3.9 million. And if anybody reads my Wellness Wednesdays, the I think two weeks ago I put out something about sitting is killing you. We should have all had this meeting standing up, actually. Um, but it's back pain. Back pain is our number one problem. And whether we sit all day because we stare at a computer or if we're up on concrete all day because we're running the floors. So... This is a big deal, um, and I'll tell you, we'll get there on what we're going to do with that. Um, ER visits. Here's another way to educate. We had 1,600 visits from our employees. This is our employees. This is our people. And 516 of them was, was probably a headache or a toothache or I got cramps. So it was misused. There's a big education here. Oh, no, go back. 28% were peds. I can take that into account because there is no pediatric open on Saturday or Sunday. So I would take my kid too. Um, chronic conditions, like I told you, hypertension was number one for 18.5% of our population. And these are the people that actually went to the doctor. So those people that are on our spreadsheet for quarter one, half of them haven't even gone to the doctor. They don't even realize that they have high blood pressure. And then hyperlipidemia, which is your cholesterol, is 11.4%. Our screening utilization for 2016, we're killing it in breast cancer. Cervical cancer is really well. And then colon cancer, a lot of education there that we can start providing to our employees because nobody's getting a colon screening, which I heard that now we have a take-home test that we can do, and it's not as invasive. Um, and then our skin cancer cost, we spent... Um, $822,000 in that last year. I also found out we have a 24-7 nurse hotline and two calls were made last year. I did not know anything about it until, until two days ago that we even had that option. So 
that's uh, that's just some food for thought. Let y'all see it because y'all don't see stuff like that. And this is why I'm, I'm very adamant about making some changes in y'all's department, like with those healthy lifestyles, because you have no idea what small incremental change you make affects this. This is a big deal. So what are we going to do with all that information? Well, we have the skills fair coming up in October for you nursing people. And since you just saw that we spent $3.9 million in musculoskeletal with back pain, we are going to do a, a JPA, which is that job performance assessment. Um, and we're going to do some education at the skills fair. It's not, there's no penalizing for it, but it's just to show you guys maybe it's different ways to roll your patients, to pull and to lift because how you were 10 years ago when you got the job is not how you are now. And what I could do with my upper body when at 25, I'm sure not going to be able to do at 45. So it's just re-educating how to lift properly using full body so that you don't get hurt on the job. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We have open enrollment again in October, so that'll be another widespread opportunity for me to tell people that they don't have to come to classes and they don't have to come to uh, call a coach and whatever else. They don't have to do two events. Um, and then the other thing that's going to be interesting is how HRA money is distrib distributed. Um, we... Currently, if you are on the plan, if you're on a family plan like myself, it's a thousand dollar. Um, what is it called? Deductible? HRA? Because I have a three thousand dollar, three thousand deductible. Yes, my benefits person over here. Um, so they get West Tennessee Healthcare from then has given me a thousand dollars every time. Well, last year they didn't give me a thousand; they gave me nine hundred because I had to fill out a health risk assessment. And I got an extra hundred for doing that. So they gave me nine hundred, and I had to earn the hundred. We're gonna go a couple of steps above that because I don't think you should just give anybody anything um, without earning it. So you have an annual health update that everybody is required to do. You will be surprised how many people don't do it or don't show up in the right amount of town. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what month you were born in, right? It's on a birth certificate. You celebrate it every year. That's that's when you go. You don't go two months later and be like, I forgot. It's your birthday. You don't forget. So we will give you $100 for going and doing what you were supposed to do at your annual health update and showing up on June, which is my birthday. We will also give you $100 for having the flu shot because we are trying to go, what's our goal? 90%, 95%, 100%. 100%. Okay, we, we fail. We, we're right there. We're, we're getting close. We, we still miss it. So that will be another opportunity for you to earn. And then there is that health assessment that we've already done for the past two years, I believe, which will be $100. We're looking at also adding that going to your primary care physician because we don't do that as adults. We take our babies, go and get their vaccinations and we had a 90, 89 to 92% rate last year um, for adult vaccinations. We were at 10% of who's eligible for it. We, we don't take care of ourselves. So this will be another um, way for us to reward you for doing what you need to do to take care of your health by going to see your PCP. Now, I know if y'all don't understand the back end of that, claims data codes things all kinds of differently. Don't care what you're coded for. I'm not looking for a wellness visit. I'm just looking that you saw somebody in the year. So if that scares anybody, because I do know that there's potential. You show up for a wellness visit, they find high blood pressure, and now I'm going to code you that I've written you for blood pressure medication. So on the back end, don't, don't worry about that. So those are the things that I'm very excited about because it's kind of giving you that little push you need to make the steps that we should have already been doing anyways. Um, again, with the ER visits, that's an education thing, when to go. And surprisingly, with that call, the nursing call, which I printed off for y'all to put in your, um, in your break rooms. It's got the hotline number. But some people don't know where to go. What if, what if my pediatric clinic is closed and... Cooper's got pneumonia, which is my eight-year-old. What am I going to do? We've already been to the doctor twice. Who do I need to go to next? And so giving the options, 
kind of like directional arrow, arrows. Where do we go? And it will be able to show people the right route to take besides running straight into our ER because our ER is, it blows up. Um, we are bringing the health fair back. Everybody remember the health fair? Yes. It will not be like the normal health fair where you stand in line for four hours to get your height weight and take blood pressure with 50 people standing around you. Um, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be just more or less the same as that we do for the community. It's education on what we offer here, West Tennessee Healthcare, for employees, whether that's from the plan, whether that's the call log, whether that's VOIA, EAP. We'll just be more education and um, screenings. That's the other thing we're going to bring in there is a lot of we'll do um, breast cancer screenings, melanoma screenings, hearing, vision, things like that, health awareness. And then, obviously, food nutrition is going to be, me and Troy are going to be best friends by the end of this, because I, I talk to him a lot. But we're still constantly making small incremental changes. I know you don't see them, but it's come a long way just since I've been here in September. They're doing, they're doing a great job. Um, and then the annual health update vaccination campaign that Shay came in. That's what I wanted you all to see is that we'll be able to offer that. Um, right now, currently, if you are on a medical plan, it is 60 for shingles unless you have a risk factor. But um, we might be able to look at changing that with Aetna since CDC did drop it to 50. But if you were on some other plan, I believe Blue Cross Blue Shield is 50. Um, but that will be a lot of July education rolling out. Okay, before we go into that, what time is it? We got five minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Because if we don't hit the next part, I'm okay with that. Oh, the picnic. Yes. Did everybody go to the picnic? Yes. Did y'all see my Healthy Heights line? Yes. So we... We had an outstanding response for people. I was shocked how many people we have are vegetarian in this place. But um, we offered vegetarian burgers, so bean burgers, veggie burgers, and chicken. And then we had slaw with a vinegar base. And we had baked chips in a fruit cup. And then we grilled onions. I think that was it. Um, but anyways, it was a great success. We had, they, they went back to Sam's twice because we ran out of, of food on our end, and um, I think we ended up selling 500 burgers, not selling, gave 500 burgers, and then chicken as well. So that definitely will be a staple. We will keep it, um, if not add additional offerings next year. So I do appreciate you if you came through the line and supported it. Um, it, was, it, was very, it was very well received, and I was extremely nervous because it was going to be one way or the other. Anything else? I know I went through a ton of stuff. Um, I do request, because I've had a lot of people, the way I send emails out to all employees is obviously through constant contact. It's not through our server. And some people have difficulties opening it in your department. So if you can, can print off like the Wellness Wednesday email that comes out, because some people just can't even open it the way it goes through an outside internet option. Um, if you could just print that off and just put it in your break room on a weekly basis, that would help. Um, and I'll try to get them on the intranet. I just don't know if I can get them done in a timely manner before the next week. Um, and then, again, we have those handouts for what's coming up in June, and you'll see them on the LCD screens and then on the hospital screen savers. But any other questions on stuff? What we went over. Oh, and for the health fair of those who are used to the health fair, I will not be asking for 180 volunteers. So you're okay. You don't have to volunteer to health coach or man a booth or any of that stuff. Unless you just wanted to. But we won't be doing health fairs at all like that. Anything else? So implementation is the last thing. How's it going? Is it going? Have we made any moves on, you know, what you decided for your department? Yes. <laughs> Is it well received? Is it like, shut up, stop talking to me, don't tell me what to eat again? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. Um, I can see that. Definitely just continue to encourage because everybody falls off and it's just, it's okay to get back on. And like I'm told, go ahead. I will, I can find out, try to get to their goal. I will find out because I have a call with her, not this coming week, but the next to do a follow-up and I will send out everything. You know, log it in, but I don't, I didn't know if there was any kind of goal. If they, if they just complete it, maybe there's some type of extension or if you still meet it nine months down the road, do you get it? I will find that out. Yes, so, but it can't hurt to weigh in, so just tell them to weigh in, and we'll find out if we can stretch it out. Anything else with the, the lifestyle changes? Those of you that were, there's water. Who's got water? How's it going? So they can't play. Like if I missed, hey Chad, unmute them. Okay. So do they ever get to come back? Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, you're giving them the opportunity to come back. What about somebody had a f food? Um, yes. Absolutely. And that's exactly what you have to do. Like, for example, when we were at the employee picnic, you were able to get both. And we encouraged people to get both. Just try it because you're not going to go buy it when you've never had it before. But you should, when it's there for tasting, try it. Same thing, like I said, with the, the food nutrition. I forgot to mention that. They have put out signs that say, Sample, ask for samples. We will let you sample everything. So sample it, try it. Be like this is new on the menu. Let me let me get a taste. So because that's the way to kind of pe for people to think outside the box. Because when you told people it was a veggie burger, you should have seen some faces. It was like uh, -uh no way. But if you try it, it's it was good. You had you had mustard and and onions and pickles and that makes everything taste great. Um. Okay, so we're right up and down on three. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, y'all are free to go. I do have those handouts to grab. And if you didn't sign in, just please sign in. I tried to write some of your names down, but I might have missed quite a few of you. But thank you all for coming, and I'll keep you up to date on...